A few days ago, I posted a video where I talked about how I rake off and maintain my solar panels when it snows here in Minnesota. At the end of that video, I said, well, this. Now, what I said earlier about a lot of people just wait and see, well, I decided to give that a test. So if I wait and see on those panels over there, how long will it take for them to clear on their own? So with that funky beat aside, I set off on a challenge to not touch those six control panels, as I called them, for the rest of the week and see just what happens. How long will it take for them to melt off on their own? Now, the experiment originally started with 10 panels and then made its way down to six, uh, just so it kind of looked a little bit nicer, as you'll see in the videos to come. The experiment didn't quite go as planned, simply because it's been uncharacteristically warm the last couple of days. The average high this time of year in Minnesota is about 23 degrees, and yesterday and today it got to almost 40. So, as you'll see in the video, the results were a little bit mixed, but uh, here it is, and here's how long it took for my panels to melt off. In an unbelievably annoying turn of events, we've been having little flurries off and on all day today. Uh, who would have guessed it? So, the panels that I scraped off yesterday are once again covered. Now, they're a very light coating. You can definitely tell a difference between the panels that I did yesterday and the panels that I didn't touch. So I'm actually going to take the drone up and uh, take a look and see exactly the difference from the aerial view. Alright guys, so we are back out in the garage here and I am going to take the, uh, the drone up and see if we can get a good view of what exactly the panels look like from the sky. I know on the deck it's not the greatest view, so I've got the drone sitting out in the driveway here. We're going to spin up the rotors and see what's going on. Take off. All right, so we are over the garage right now. You can see the panels uh, over the garage were the ones that we cleaned off yesterday. And as we kind of move our way to the south, which is uh, to the left, obviously, these panels were also the ones that were scraped yesterday. And you can tell that there's been some thawing as a little bit of sun has peeked through, but they have kept uh, a pretty decent uh, clearing for themselves. Now, as we get over a little bit more, these are the panels there's four rows counting from the left, one, two, three, four, and then the two on the bottom, those were not touched. Uh, you can tell almost exactly as far as my roof rake reaches from the deck right there. That's about as far as I could get. So those are gonna be our control panels. Looks like there's two, four, six, eight, ten of them. Uh, we're gonna leave those untouched and see how long it takes them to thaw out. So as soon as these ridiculous little flurries get done today, I'll go back out and scrape off these panels again to try to keep them as clear as humanly possible. And you'd be surprised actually, right now, these are still producing about 500 watts. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Today's day two, we'll come back out tomorrow for day three. As we woke up on day three, it was a bright and sunny, beautiful morning. However, it did snow the night before. So the total flurry accumulation from yesterday, as well as overnight, led about two additional inches of snow which unfortunately wasn't in the forecast. So I went out bright and early this morning, got the roof rake going again, and raked them back off. So looking at the garage, you can see where I scraped the panels off, and I'd scraped them off about three hours ago at this point. So there was actually some melting going on already on that uh, bottom right panel that you're looking at. You can definitely see the rake marks, and you can definitely see I didn't quite get to the top of the panels. However, getting the bottom portion scraped will start to generate some electricity and some heat, which will hopefully melt the rest of those portions off. Now, as we pan to the left here, you can see there's already been some pretty good melting on some of those panels right in the middle. Those ones are very exposed to the sun, and they do get uh, a lot of direct sunlight compared to the shadow of the garage, even more so than the panels to the left. Now, I did size down the number of control panels on the left. I went from eight to six and my reasoning for that is I didn't want to keep those bottom panels covered if I didn't have to so there's six panels there that are still covered by snow 
the two panels directly beneath them I did scrape off and then the two to the right I tried to get a little bit closer but as we can see very clearly on day three here had I not scraped off all those panels they would still be very covered up in snow so the six control panels are still very covered up whereas the rest of them have shown quite a bit of melting so I'm kind of thinking that the old wait and see mentality might not be what it could be uh, when it comes to a little bit of DIY maintenance on the solar panels. Next, I'm going to take a look at the energy production from the day once the sun goes down and see uh, just exactly how much money I made versus what I would have lost had I not scraped them off. All right, now let's look at some dollars and cents of today. So if we look at the very bottom of the app here, you can see that we generate 5.75 kilowatt hours of electricity. <clears throat> now that's not bad considering it's, uh, it was very, uh, very covered up this morning. If you contrast that to yesterday, we produced three kilowatt hours. Now, if you remember yesterday, it was flurrying all day. The panels kept getting covered up. Uh, and that's where it ended up at at the very end of the day. The day before, 3.52. So that was the first day that we scraped it. As the snow kind of added up on there, it dropped down to three yesterday. After scraping it today, we produced 5.75 kilowatt hours. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. If you look at the layout of the array, when my installers actually installed the array, they did a terrible job of laying out where these things actually are. So unfortunately, I had to guess, and I'm fairly confident that I know where these panels are located because they are not located in the app correctly. What I know for sure though, is that this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here are my test panels. Those are the four panels on the far left. So one of them didn't even register today. The other ones were averaging about 14 watt hours on the full day. Now, if you compare that to some of the other ones that were actually uncovered, we had a couple that were at 421, 282 watt hours, 338. So definitely a huge difference in production uh, between the ones that were covered up and the ones that were not covered up. So if we were to bring that back, let's say that all of these average 15 watt hours on the day. So for the 15 watt hours times 45, we would have generated 675 watt hours on the day. We generated 5.75 kilowatt hours, which is 5,750 watt hours. So a major, major difference there. So 5750 minus 675. Scraping off the panels netted 5,075 watt hours today. So that's a, a pretty decent increase. Um, the, the math doesn't necessarily work out simply because uh, I get about 12.3 cents per kilowatt hour that I send back. So if you say 12.3, this is rough math, times about five, I made about 63 cents by scraping the panels off today. Now, is 63 cents something that you're gonna you know, freak out and do every day? Well, that adds up, because let's say this goes forward for the next 10 days, that 61, 62, 63 cents, that now is $6. If this goes for 20 days, that's now $12. And by the end of your billing cycle, it does add up to real money. So is it worth it for 61 cents of usage today? Absolutely, because it will only increase tomorrow as the sun stays out, it gets a little bit warmer. In the next coming days, it's actually gonna get into the upper 30s. So I absolutely think that uh, the money made today was, was worth it. Day four was a bright and sunny day. Uh, the high was about 23 degrees today, so we saw some significant melting on the panels, but the six control panels are still very much covered up. The rest of them have started to melt nicely, showing probably about 50% total coverage, uh, and it's getting a lot better. Now the forecast for the next few days is it's gonna warm up uncharacteristically, so uh, we'll see what happens. Day five, this might be spelling the very end of the experiment here. The highs today reached about 40 degrees, and you're seeing some significant sheeting on the control panels. When those panels choose to melt off, they come down in sheets, which can kind of make it a falling ice danger if you're not very careful standing beneath it. So if I had to assume, uh, if I had to guess, this will be the end of our experiment, as tomorrow on day six, it'll probably be done. There you go, day six. We are looking at total 
the panel clear off. We've got two panels with a little bit of snow on them there, uh, but that is not enough to account for anything. It's strange because average high is this time of year about 23 degrees, but it's been in the upper 30s to almost 40 uh, yesterday and today. So the panels have cleared themselves off and uh, that is the end of the experiment. Let's see how we did. So the final answer that I have for the question that I was looking to answer is how much money did it save me by raking off those solar panels? The math on this unfortunately is not very exact because there are so many variables. How many panels produced? How many panels had a little bit of snow on them? How many panels were totally clear? It's nearly impossible to get an exact figure, but to the best of my calculations, this is what I have. Since the experiment began, my solar panels produced about $5 worth of electricity. Uh, this is $5 back in my pocket that I'm not paying to the electric company. Now, the panels that were covered up only produced about, on average, 10 watt hours a day. Had all of my panels produced at that same rate, it would have been about a dollar that I would have made since this experiment began. This is very rough math. Now, you take one away from five, you're left with four bucks. So, by spending a half an hour raking off my solar panels, I saved or made four dollars. So I suppose then the question is to you. Is it worth a little bit of effort to make $4 in this case? Sure, for me it is. And the reason I say that is because on a normal situation in a normal winter, if the average highs stayed where they usually do in Minnesota, we wouldn't have seen a thaw like this for potentially a month or two. And by scraping off the panels, yeah, they're not gonna melt all the way off, but at least I'm gonna see some production that is more than 10 watt hours per panel per day. If I were to leave my panels covered all winter long, they wouldn't pay me anything and I would be paying on my solar loan as well as my full electric bill seeing no benefits in the middle. So yeah, I'll go out there and spend half an hour raking the panels off every time it snows. In the event that I can recoup four bucks each time, it's worth it to me. So that's it. I hope you found this video informational or at least a little bit entertaining and uh, maybe it'll help you make up your mind whether or not you go solar or whether or not you rake off your panels in the wintertime. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.